Hey guys, how you doing today? Well, my uh, my part came from my snow plow and I got all this plowed out a little so I thought I'd do a little shooting. Years ago I got into the cowboy shooting game and uh, I really liked it a lot. Uh, I don't get to do it as much. I used to shoot gunfighter which is what you just saw there, a uh, gun in each hand. Um, I've got arthritis so bad now that I could still do it, but not as fast. Anyway, it got me thinking about another forgotten caliber, uh, and that's the 45 Colt. I, uh, when I started cowboy shooting, I, I just started with 45s. I, I like them, and a lot of guys now go to the 38s because they can get a little faster and less recoil, blah, blah, blah. But I kind of like them, uh, the, the 45. It's a really versatile cartridge, and it's not really forgotten, except that at the time, in 1873, it was a black powder cartridge, and, uh, and guys, uh, it, was the, it was probably the most powerful handgun cartridge of the time. It would run a, it would run a 250 grain lead bullet near 1,000 feet a second, 900 for sure. I, I get 900 to 1,000 feet a second out of my black powder loads. Um, so it was a powerful cartridge. And uh, the 1873 Winchester was starting to come out in the 45 uh, uh, a Colt. So it also, you could have the same cartridge for your rifle and your sidearm. And uh, I start to think about okay, it. As I was saying before <laughs> I was interrupted by a dead battery, um, the three cartridges of that era uh, was the uh, 45 Colt, the 4440, and the 3840. And uh, they're the with the 45 being probably the most powerful. I guess the 4440 was probably next in line or pretty close to the same. Um, your your. Calibers back then were were named by the caliber on top of how much powder it was on. These were black powder loads. So your your 4440 would have been a 44 caliber on top of 40 40 grains. I don't know what they did, why they called it the Colt. Probably because it came out with the uh, Colt single action army. <clears throat> um, maybe I don't know the. Uh, the 3840 is a little different. It is a 40 caliber bullet uh, with 38 grains of powder. It's backwards for some reason. The um, the interesting thing about the 3840 is it's a 40 caliber, AKA 10 millimeter, running about 900 feet a second. You know that's kind of sounds familiar, don't it? Almost like a 40 uh, Smith and Wesson. I guess uh, history does repeat itself. Anyway. I'm going to shoot this uh, 45 a little. I'm going to practice a little and uh, play with my 45s. Um, I want to check check them for accuracy, and uh, and also I've got some Corbon 45 cold ammo here. It's pretty some pretty stout, stout stuff, and uh, we're going to shoot it at a gel block. So stick around. It's going to get interesting. Come on over to the table. All right, so let's see where it is in the accuracy department. Uh, nothing's worth anything if it isn't accurate. So I'm going to just do a two-handed um, traditional hold and shoot five shots, and we're at three, three yards, and uh, let's see what it does. Okay, you can see it, it's not uh, not all that bad. Okay, let's try it a little further back. Ooh, I pulled that.
Well, other than the first one I pulled, uh, they all clover leafing right on the the last ones that we just shot. So, and that's five yards, and I could go back further and stuff. But my hands are freezing, and I'm not shooting to my best ability today. Anyway, I think it passed the accuracy test. You're no, no one really wanted to load 45 Colt to its potential because until Ruger came out with their uh, Black Hawk, Super Black Hawk, and uh, this is an early Ver Vaquero, or first model Vaquero, um, none of the Colts or the Colt replicas would, would hold the pressures that you can develop with a, uh, with a 45 Colt. Um, some of the some of the pressures I mean I've gotten some loads that are some pretty stout loads I would consider them good bear loads for a pistol but I wouldn't shoot them out of this is the new model Vaquero the new model Vaquero was designed to look really a lot like the, the old Colt single action army and it's not as robust as a as an old model Vaquero the old model Vaquero, you can see, and this one just has a shorter barrel, but the cylinder is so much more robust and big, and it has the walls, the cylinder walls are, are a lot thicker. It's just built to, to handle those heavier cartridges, um, which is something if you do want to get into shooting your, your, your 45 Colt, know what you're going to shoot and make sure you don't put a heavy load in one of those replicas or something. If you're going to just shoot cowboy and you shoot a replica, that's fine, okay? Or you shoot one of these uh, new Vaqueros, that's fine. But just know that you don't want to have any heavy stuff around. This Corbon that we're going to shoot, I'm going to shoot it in the old Vaquero here, which is designed to take it. So, um, Let's get started. Let's shoot some Corbon and see the difference uh, in the in the recoil that we had with the cowboy loads. I'm sure it's going to be quite different. Okay, according to these the box, this is a 300 grain jacketed hollow point bullet, and it's traveling 1120 feet a second. I would say that would definitely be a good bullet. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it'd be a good bullet for for personal defense it's too much gun but it definitely be in one of these lever action guns over here be a great hundred yard deer cartridge uh, I'm just gonna aim for the uh, the A box on this target and let's just see how it feels well it hit the A and as you can see, it's not much fun to shoot out of a pistol. But if you were in bear country, it's a 300 grain bullet going 1120 feet a second. And I don't know, it might even be going faster. Out of a, a carbine or a uh, lever gun, might be going a little bit faster. Like I say, it'd be a hefty good deer load. So um, I'm going to shoot a couple more. Okay, so. The rifle at the time was the 1873 Winchester and it looked like this. Um, this one's in 45 Colt. You also want to be careful what you put in this gun. It's if This is a good action. It's really a fast action. A lot of cowboy shooters like this more than any other action because it could be it could be slicked down and really be a good fast action. But it's not as strong as a 92, 1892 Winchester, an 1894 Winchester, uh, or a Marlin 1894 would be another good one if you wanted to use these heavy core bonds or something similar. Um, but, but for now, if you did want to hunt with this rifle and have a pretty stout load, you could make a 250 or 300 grain uh, black powder load and you can get that baby going pretty good and it'd have a lot of power and it'd still be a good 80 to 100 yard deer cartridge. Uh, but we know the black powder doesn't develop the pressure. You get more pressure out of uh, uh, 
a little bit of tight group in one of these big cases the, than you do with, um, with, with a full case of black powder. So anyway, I'm going to shoot a couple of these core bonds through my Marlin and see how the recoil feels with them. So, 1894 Marlin, very, very stout action. Uh, this one has a 20, 20, 20 inch barrel. I've got one with a longer barrel that I'd, I'd probably prefer for deer hunting. Uh, but for cowboy shooting, this was a fun gun. And uh, it'll also handle that 300 grain core bond. So let's, uh, let's try it on a piece of steel over here and see if I can hit the hostage target. Uh, See if it's accurate enough to hit the hostage target. Oh yeah! <laughs> it spun it around and spun it back again. <laughs> I'll shoot another one, let you see. Okay, we'll see if I can hit it twice in a row. Keep your eye on the red hostage taker. Okay. The green dot's what we're going to shoot at. I'm going to try to make the bullet go straight into that. And uh, that's supposed to be for a pistol caliber um, round. Of course, we're shooting a pistol caliber out of a rifle. This would be like for a deer load, so I would assume you'd probably shoot it out of a rifle. Let's see if I can make it go straight and we'll see what it does. I'd say we got a hit. <laughs> well, it looks like it kind of blew it up. Anyway, she popped her. Um, uh, I think the bullet's still inside, so we'll go in the shop and take a look here in a little bit. I want to shoot some black powder rounds while we're out here. I'm going to try some of these black powder rounds on these rifle targets. Black powder, it ain't gone and forgotten, I'll tell you what, it still shoots them good, nice and accurate, lots of smoke. It, uh, there's a lot of places smoky. where the only thing that really came, this thing still got almost all its weight. Um, the only thing that kind of came out, let me get uh, the bullet passing through, is there's little pieces of jacket that exploded out, but really not a lot. I don't see much lead that blew out. Anyway, that would be the back. And that would be your mushroom, and that would be the front. I'd say this bullet performed really, really well uh, in there. Um, and coming out of a rifle, that'd probably um, be, a, this, uh, be a pretty good deer. This 45 Colt, as far as I'm concerned, is not a forgotten cartridge. Not in my mind. It's a dang good cartridge, it's a fun cartridge, and it's a versatile cartridge. So, anyway, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping in. Um, have a great day. Bye-bye.